Onward and upward. How's everyone doing? Another Saturday, which means another Q&A, but here's the deal. I'm reading your comments. So on Tuesday, so we did two Q&As last week. I think it was Tuesday. I published a question and answer on running shoes. And I asked the, the question of the day for that video was, did you like the format where I focused in on one topic for the Q&A? I would say it was a resounding yes from all of you based on reading your comments. There was over 100 comments and uh, easily, I, I would say 50% of the comments mentioned they like the fact that I honed in on one topic. So that is going to be the strategy moving forward for these Q&As, which means I'm going to ask the question of the day right now uh, for next week, okay? So next week, we're going to talk, so it'll be Saturday, oh gosh, is it the 17th or 18th of January? Um, will be question of the day for this video, which I will answer all the questions next week. What questions do you have for me about marathon training? Good news, my knee is feeling amazing, which means I'm starting to think about and strategize for my personal uh, marathon training block for spring 2020, which means I'd love to answer as many questions as possible from all of you. And I know many of you are training for a marathon right now, not everybody, but maybe you're thinking about training for a marathon down the road. Uh, I bet the, the question and answer for next week could apply to you as well. So that's a strategy moving forward. We're gonna hone in on one particular topic. However, today it's random. Total questions from everywhere, all sorts of different topics because um, I didn't have the time to put out the word asking for a particular topic, uh, a set of questions on a particular topic. Okay, there we go. Here we go. Diving in, number one from Dave this week. Hey, I just had a question regarding the massaging about plantar fasciitis. Uh, why do you say avoid the areas where it is most painful? Is there any particular stretches you can recommend? Keep up the good work and positive energy on the channel. Thank you, Dave. I think that was coming in from email. So for those that don't know, I've suffered from plantar fasciitis, which is an injury on the bottom of your foot. Uh, my pain for plantar fasciitis happened right on the heel, uh, right where the heel is uh, not on the bottom of the heel, but a little, about an inch forward. And oh, it's so painful, so painful. I actually had to have surgery in college. So I would not recommend surgery if you can avoid it. I realize though, sometimes you're dealing with plantar fasciitis. PF is the uh, short way to say it for years and years. So Dave, um, again, listening to the doctors, what I've heard, and I'm not a doctor, but when you massage right on the painful area, you're actually just inflaming that area more, like you're aggravating it. Um, whereas, so for the, it's a tendon on the bottom of your foot, you can look it up, the fascia tendon, and what's happening is that most likely, well not, okay, I shouldn't, I gotta be careful what I say, but oftentimes um, that fascia tendon is too tight, and which can be caused by your entire kinetic chain being too tight, meaning, so your soleus, your calf muscle, your hamstring muscle, uh, your gluteus, your, your butt muscle, all the way up to your lower back. All of those muscles are too tight, which is actually pulling on the fascia uh, tendon on the bottom of your foot. And that often can lead to plantar fasciitis. So Dave, um, they, what I've learned over time is actually massaging right on that area is actually not good. You can massage the arch of your foot, right? Uh, so if this is the bottom of your foot, these are your toes. So the arch would be here. This would be the painful area, your heel. So you can massage your arch and then even through your toes, but avoid the heel area. And as far as stretches go, oh man. I mean, actually yesterday I published uh, my prehab. So I have all my stretches there listed in that prehab video. It's everything. You want to you wanna stretch everything. But I guess if I, I mean, I would say, if I, if I had to pick one muscle, I would say your, your hamstrings. Those are really tight on me. It's pretty easy to stretch your calves, but I think hamstrings are a lot harder to stretch. So anyway, Dave, um, watch that video. I hope that helps. Oh, I feel for you. It's not a fun injury at all. All right, moving on. Question two, Isaac asks, do you have a video on using a treadmill for training? Isaac, I do not because I think I, I've run on one treadmill in the last 10 years. Well, I was actually last summer at a hotel. So Isaac, I don't train on treadmills. I have nothing against it, but I just don't enjoy it. And I will say they've done studies that treadmills, um, you are using your muscles a little differently that 
uh, whereas if you are running even on a treadmill that has an, uh, an arch to it and you're self-propelling it, because the treadmill is powered by a motor, it's just you're using your muscles a little differently. And uh, I, at the end of the day, love to run outside. So that's the, a couple reasons why I don't use a treadmill. But I get it. Sometimes the weather is so crazy, you have to hop on a treadmill. Okay, moving on. Or do you? No, no, moving on. Do it. Josh asks, number three, what's your opinion on the Under Armour uh, Hover Infi Infinite? Um, so Or Infinity? That's from Josh. I have never uh, trained in an Under Armour running shoe. Josh, I have nothing against Under Armour. At the end of the day, I just haven't been able to work it into the rotation. Based on what I've seen from Under Armour, uh, just looking at the shoe in running shoe stores and pictures online, it appears that Under Armour running shoes, to me, they, they seem a little overbuilt. So a little too much going on through that upper, especially. I'm Anyway, that's just based on me holding it. I've never run in uh, Under Armours, but anyway, that's my general opinion of Under Armour. I would love to, maybe in 2020, maybe it's my year. Okay, moving on. Question, I think number four, this is from uh, Jim in Iowa. He asks, hi Seth, been following the vlog for the last few months. Great advice and inspiration. Thank you, Jim. I was wondering if you have a recommendation of a lightweight running vest. I've never used one and plan to this use one this year as I train for a marathon. I'm looking for something to keep gels in small water bottles. I didn't see anything on the equipment list on YouTube. Thank you, Jim from Iowa. So Jim, I forgot to grab it. It's actually inside right now because I'm, oh yeah, by the way, I'm redesigning the studio. So uh, bear with me. I think hopefully by next week I will have it done. We shall see. But anyway, that's why it's so bare. Jim, I would recommend my, so the lightest running vest on the market, as far as I know, at least last summer, 2019, is the Raid Light, which is a French company, Raid Light Revolutive, it's a French word, three liter, okay, look it up, Raid Light Revolutive three liter, I'm probably, no, I'm not saying that right, uh, but I love it, it's so comfortable, no bounce, um, definitely can carry plenty of gels and water, um, I think it's perfect for the marathon. So it's raid light. It's, I love it. Uh, I wish I could use it in like a 50 K that's when I would use it. I wouldn't wear it in a marathon, but Jim, I think it's a great game plan for a marathon raid light spelled R A I D L I G H T Jim. I'll try to remember to link to it down below. Okay. Moving on here to too big for Rue on YouTube ass. I have pain on the side of my heel. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything online about it. Have you ever had this pain? It could be plantar fasciitis. I've had that before, plantar fasciitis that kind of migrates up to the side of the heel. So that would be my, now make sure it's not a sharp pain. If it's a sharp pain, you gotta be really careful. Oh boy, there's a bone in there. Well, I think that's toward the front, but then there's the navicular bone. You really have to be careful, but I think that would be more toward the front of the top of your foot. The navicular bone is a really dangerous bone to get an injury in, but uh, it could be, my guess would be plantar fasciitis that has migrated a little bit, it's so inflamed, but anyway, hopefully it's not a sharp pain on the side of your heel. If it's sharp, definitely go to the dark uh, doctor. Okay, moving on to uh, SA Hacking on, I believe YouTube asked, um, how do you feel about regular hill running taking the place of many of the supplementary gym exercises, squats, calf raises, hip flexor exercises, etc. They all seem a little redundant and frankly unnecessarily unnecessary unnecessary when regularly running hilly trails. And he he's 42. Um, so and he okay I'll, I'll finish. He's 42 years of experience. It seems that whenever I run hills and trails regularly, my entire body is much stronger and less prone to injuries. I couldn't agree more. Now. Um, my runner's knee, my theory as to why I have runner's knee right now, everybody, is because I transitioned maybe a little too quickly from mountain running to the marathon racing. And I kind of, I haven't been doing the vertical running and therefore my quad strength decreased. And from what I've read, the research I've done, talking to the physical therapist, like weak quads and weak hips can lead to runner's knee. So I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to agree with you, but I will say, um, I'd say, it, I'd say it can't hurt to do some exercises in the gym in addition to running hilly trails. For example, I'm beginning to introduce the pistol, pistol squat into uh, my regimen in the gym, and I'm so excited. I think it's going to help me. It's single leg pistol squats. I'll, I'll do a video on it at some point. 
Um, so anyway, I agree with you mostly, but um, I, I'm not, I personally am not going to cut out the gym once I reintroduce vertical running into the regimen. Good question and thought process there. Moving on to Joshua. I like this one a lot. I think this is number seven. I've always thought ultra running would be a cool addition to the X Games. Joshua, I have never, that has never crossed my mind. So I, we've talked about this, I think last week, about how maybe ultra running could be introduced into uh, the Olympics at some point. But Joshua, I'm just trying to think like, now I could see obstacle course racing be a little more attractive to that X game community, but maybe there could be an ultra running uh, obstacle course mixture because the X Games, for those that don't know, it's uh, snowboarding, skateboarding in the summer, snowboarding, uh, all sorts of crazy winter and summer sports. And I'm just trying to figure out like, anyway, Joshua, I think it's, I like thinking outside the box. I like your thought process. If anybody has any comments about this, could ultra running ever end up in an X Games type environment? I'm all about pushing the boundaries with respect to running and getting the sport in front of more people. Because as I said uh, this past week, 7 billion runners, I'm a big believer that any type of running is good for the body, good for the mind, and at the end of the day, good for the world. All right, there you go. Okay, moving on, I think number eight, Matt asks, uh, lastly, okay, this was a big, long comment from last week, so I only grabbed his question at the end. He says, lastly, when you were talking about an ultra marathon being in the Olympic Games, it made me think, why don't they have the half marathon in the Olympic Games? So this connects to the previous question as well. Matt, I think there, there's not enough. I think, um, Matt, it's, it's, <laughs> you're, you're <laughs> oh man, it's such a, it's a, I see what you're saying, but I think between the 10K and the marathon, the talent level would be diluted a little too much if you had to then divide all of that talent between the half marathon as well. I know there's a lot of very talented half marathon runners out there, but um, at the end of the day, it comes down to money, of course, because of time on TV. But uh, anyway, I think it would dilute it too much, Matt, is my thought. I think it would take away from the marathon, take away from the 10K, and all of the events would be just a little too diluted. That's my short answer. Uh, Matt, anyway, I'd be open to it, but I think, yeah, those are my thoughts, Matt. Good question. Okay, moving on. This is from Graham. I have a question. Uh, what do you personally look for in running socks? What makes one pair of socks better than another? Uh, what is your opinion on that? That is from Graham. So, Graham, my favorite running socks, at least for trail running especially, are Smart Wool. I think I have them on right now, actually. I love Smart Wool. So, Graham, I, I, of course, comfort is very important. What I'm also looking for now, Graham, and I've learned more about this in 2019, are socks for racing that don't slip inside the shoe. So, I was able to acquire some Solomon socks this past summer that have a little bit of, uh, I'm going to call it little strands of rubber sewn into the bottom of the sock uh, just below the toes, so just below the toe box to help prevent any slipping inside the racing shoes. And honestly, I mean, it, did it make a difference? At the end of the day, I probably will never actually know. But I, at least mentally, I'm like, gosh, that is a brilliant idea to help prevent any slipping inside the shoe to just have a little bit of rubber uh, on the bottom of the toe box. So I look for comfort. Um, I look for uh, wicking, of course, so wicking away moisture away from the foot. And I find Smart Wool does a really great job because of they integrate wool into the design of the sock. Um, and Graham, one last point is that when you really get dialed into your running socks, you can actually start to pair your a sock with a shoe because some the inner liner of different shoes, they're, it's different. Um, so the sock, in order again to avoid slipping, the sock, different types of socks react differently to the inner liner of different running shoes. Does that make sense? Um, okay, one last point. Summer, winter, uh, summertime, I have my summertime running socks and then I have my wintertime running socks. If I remember, I'll try to link to a blog I made about a year ago all about running socks or you could go search for it on the homepage of the channel. Okay, Graham, it's actually a big topic. Running socks, you can really dial them in and it's, it's a lot of fun to eventually build up your 
collection of running socks that um, just are dialed into whatever surface you're running on and temperatures you're running in. Okay, moving on. Holy smokes. I got that. I went off there for a bit. Steven asked, this might be the last one. I did get a question via email uh, earlier today. Actually, let's see if I can pull it up. And uh, But Steven asked, hi, Seth, would you race a road 5K in a traditional racing flat or a Nike next percent? That is from Steven. I think that was on Twitter. So, oh, I don't see this question here. Anyway, so Steven, I did race one uh, 5K in the 4% in 2018, and I enjoyed it. But frankly, most 5Ks are on the road and you're turning sharp corners at a higher speed. And I did not feel very stable turning sharp corners in the, five, in the 4%. And, I do, and for that matter, I, I can confidently say I would not feel co confident turning corners in the next percent either on sharp corners. So Steven, I would say no to the Nike next percent for me in a 5K, but the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro is a very lightweight, very expensive. It's just like the night, it's $250, just like the next percent. That is my go-to 5K shoe, the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro, which weighs three ounces, three ounces. It's amazing. But a couple other options would be actually right here. I would even do the Audios 4 from Adidas. Um, I think this could definitely be a 5K shoe, a 10K shoe, and uh, a half marathon shoe actually. Um, and people wear this for marathons as well. But I think you could wear this for, I think it's light enough for a 5K and it's got a low profile. So the stack height is not crazy high. So as far as turning those corners, it's the opposite of the 4% or the next percent. And then lastly, it's actually up there. Oh, should I grab it? The New Balance Zante. Oh, oh I can't get it. I just tried. It's way up there. I'll, it's anyway, it's the New Balance Zante Pursuit. Okay, that would be another option for a 5k thank you steven for the question I, I thought another question came in via email but i'm not seeing it. it it may not have it may have ended up in a different folder let me just check real quick because i love you guys and da, da, da. oh and by the way some of my gmail is really starting to send a lot of emails to spam for some reason so if i miss an email from you i do apologize i can't find it i love you all thank you for being here thanks for hanging out in the bear studio we're redesigning it and um Again, next week, we will dial it in to a Q&A all about marathon training. Sound good? Have a great week. Go get it. Stay focused. Work hard. All right? Pay attention to those little things. Um, if you didn't see the vlog today, I made a big announcement about my runner's knees. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. All right, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll toss it back on the right to the running shoe Q&A on the right. And then on the left, I did make a new playlist with all of the Q&As from the past six weeks. So that'll be on the left uh, if you want to go check those out. There you go. All right. Onward and upward. Seek beauty. Work hard and love each other. See you tomorrow.